Hi, I'm JVS Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the file sharing options in Plesk 12. File sharing is a privilege only to system administrators, or Plesk administrators, and is not available to Plesk customers at this time. File sharing, as you can imagine, is something akin to Dropbox or Box.net or OneDrive or all these cloud services that are out there, with the big difference that not some company controls it, but you control it. You're in charge of what can be shared through your server. Uh, if you want to share your own personal files with other people or if you want to invite colleagues to upload their files to the server as well. The major advantage here is that you could have as much storage as you like and any storage that is available on your server is available to you right from your desktop or from a web interface. Let's go through the steps of how to make that happen. I'm already logged into my server here and I'm on the first tab, the websites and domains tab. This is the first thing that you see when you log in as a power user. If you logged in as the system administrator in the service provider view, they need to select one of your own subscriptions to get to this interface. There's another tab here at the top which is called file sharing. Let's click on that. This is a bit of a confusing interface at first perhaps, so let me talk you through this. On the left hand side here we have three sections, one for personal files, one for shared files, and one for public files. And these are, well, three different locations on the server, really. Anything in public files, other users with the link to those files will be able to see. And you get the link to any of these sections from over here. There's a link icon. If you click that, a window opens that will present you with a link that goes right to this folder. And any user who types that into their web browser will be able to see a list of files. Let's try it out. This is probably the ugliest interface of them all. It's just a standard unformatted list of all files that we saw in this directory here. Accessible to the world. This is good if you have a document that needs to be able to be downloaded in any email that you send out, for example. A bit like an Amazon S3 bucket. Shared files and personal files work exactly the same, but the difference is that shared files, you can invite other users to upload as well as download files from a protected directory for which credentials are needed. And personal files is exactly the same, but you wouldn't really give out these credentials because they're your credentials that you use to access the Plesk panel. So let's do this step by step. Public files was the easiest one. Um, let's start with personal files here. This web interface is probably familiar to you if you've used uh, this tab here in Plesk, which is the file manager. The file sharing works exactly the same. You can, have, you can upload files with this big button here. And if you do, you're invited to put the files into either of these sections here. You can move them afterwards as well, so we're gonna go through that too. Click upload and pick a test file that you want to add there. You can pick more if you like, and it's uploaded via the web interface. There's the file. If you wanted to access this from anywhere outside the server, again, click on this little folder icon and copy this link to your clipboard. Then on a different machine, in a different browser, on a different planet, you type it in. You add your Plesk credentials when you're being asked. And as soon as you log in, you see the same list that we just saw in Plesk. So far, so good. But if we look at how convenient Dropbox is, a web interface really isn't everything. So there's also a way, you'll be happy to hear, to mount this very folder right onto your desktop. I'm using a Mac here, so with the same link that I've just copied here, I'll just head over to my Finder, click anywhere on the empty desktop to bring up this Finder thing here, find the Go button, and at the bottom of the list, select Connect to Server. And we do that, a dialog comes up, paste that URL in that you've been given by Plesk, and hit Connect. And this will prompt you for your Plesk credentials. So if you're the admin, type in your Plesk credentials here. Tick this box if you'd like Keychain to remember that, and hit Connect. And what we'll have is a standard finder window with exactly the same files in that we've just seen here in the web interface. And since this is a finder window, we can now copy things into it by just dragging them into there. Maybe I'll drop this sketch2 and archive.zip into here. And after a second, this has been copied. And of course, you can just as easily drag files out of the folder and put them somewhere else. 
If you're techie and you're wondering, hey, how does this actually work? This looks like magic. It's the WebDAV protocol. So Plesk exposes that protocol and makes it easy to map folders on your desktop. And back in Plesk, if we just refresh that window, we can see that both Archive and Sketch 2 are now copied. And because it's a desktop folder, both Mac and Windows copy these hidden files into the folder as well, so we don't really need them, but Mac and Windows keep track of states as to how big was the window and how what configuration was it in, so you can delete them, it's not a problem. Anything with a dot in the front, we don't need. So that's it, now you can access your entire Plesk storage, if you like, right from your desktop. If you're on Microsoft Windows, just open your Windows Explorer, head over to your computer, and there'll be an option there that's called Map Network Drive. And if you click that, then you're presented with a drive letter to which to map this network folder. And then in the folder field, just paste in what you've been given by Plesk, and hit finish. Windows will ask you for your Plesk admin credentials and that's it, you've created a mapped folder as a drive letter. If you want to share files with other users, you need to copy them to the relevant section. So from your personal section, copy them into shared or public files or upload them to the relevant sections right away. So right now, what's happening in my shared files? I've already got some files here, but if I wanted to move some of these away or copy some of my personal files over to here, let's say sketch one and two. I can select the files in question, head over to more and select move. And this dialog comes up that says, well, where would you like to move them to? Oh, I'd like to move them to my shared files. There we go, gone from personal files and they're now in shared files. If I want to group files together, I can create a folder from here or from my desktop if I've mapped that already. And the way to do that is to head over to here, more, and create a new folder. Let me just call it test. And if I wanted to group content together, I can select several files. And again, head over to more and move this into the folder in question. To give other users access to this shared file folder on their desktop, you don't really want to give away your own credentials to the Plesk panel, so you head over to here, Users, and you create a new user account for them. Steve needs an email address. It will become clear in a minute why. So we can either give him one at this domain, which would be Steve at this domain if that exists, or we can use an external address, something like Steve's Gmail account. Under user role, click something like application user unless you have set up your own user role in Plesk. This is something that lets specific roles of users access different parts of the panel. Application user is one that lets users upload and download files. If you select something like accountant, that may not work. So use application user. Access to all subscriptions, that's fine. Leave everything in place. And under Plesk preferences here, we will give Steve some credentials. So it doesn't have to be his email here. We could just say Steve, and we can have Plesk generate a secure password. And if we want to see that, hit the show button. Or we can type in a password of our own. Click OK, and Plesk will set up a user account for Steve. Back in file sharing, head over to shared files and click that link icon again. Now we get a different URL and either just press the button to copy this into your clipboard and give that to Steve along with the credentials we've just created in Plesk. Back on Steve's computer, he would go to go, connect to server, at the URL we've given him, which is different to our URL, but it will be the same for all users on the system. Hit connect. Steve would be prompted for his credentials. And now he would see everything that we have in the shared section, including that folder we've set up. Steve could now go ahead and create his own folders here. And even drag in some files. And that's how easy it is to use file sharing in Plesk. Every user gets an own set of credentials. You have full control over which user can access what. You as the admin can copy these things into either the public area or into your personal area or delete files or upload new files. And this is possible from within a web interface or from any computer in the world.
Mounting a folder to the desktop isn't necessary to share files. Plesk allows you to share any of these files in any of these three sections, personal, shared or public files, via email. Let me show you how that works. Select the files you'd like to share, one or multiple, and select email link. Plus comes up with a window that will ask you a few questions. You can either send a link that only allows authorized Plesk users to have access, or you can send a link that allows anyone to have access. And if you do, you can also set an expiry date for that link. So the link could be valid for a week, a month, a day, or it may never expire. Plesk also knows the email addresses of users on the system, so you can either select those from here, or if they are not part of the Plesk system, you can also just type in that email and Plesk will send a link there. On the bottom you can set a subject for your email and you can leave people a little message. The most important part here is this field, and this is something that Plesk will replace with the actual link. This is going to be a random combination of letters and Plesk will take care of all that. Just make sure you don't remove this. You can amend this part here and you can of course amend the top part, but please leave this thing in place. There. Selecting a few people, click OK and Plesk will send out an email with that link. The way these links are shared is very similar to this dialog here. And there's one thing I want to make you aware of. This link here currently starts with HTTPS. So my server set up that I'm sending out secure links. But if you have a certificate problem or if you don't want to send out secure links or whatever, if you want to change that to non-secure links to standard HTTP links, you can head over to the server tab up here. Or if you're in service provider view, that's the tools and settings on the left hand side. And under general settings, you find this option here, file sharing settings. And if you click that, you have a few things to change here. If you have several domains set up as the administrator, you can select the one that you'd like to share links on, and even a subdirectory. And this tick box is important here. It says generate secure links to files and folders. If you untick this and you hit OK, and the next time you want to share a link, you will see that this is now an unencrypted link and it communicates on a different port here as well. So you can change that there, or if you want to change it as a one-off, you can also just amend that link that you're sharing. So for example, you could amend this to HTTPS, leave everything else in place, and the AT gets replaced with 443. In the file sharing settings, you can also tweak some other options. So for example, public files, you can disable sharing of public files altogether. You can share the subdirectory in which public files are shared. And you can also enable the option to share public files with credentials. And those credentials you could specify over here. I'll show you where this comes in handy before I let you go. That is in file sharing under public files. We've seen this briefly before. I didn't really get into this much. If you click the link icon, then you have two sections. So you have this bottom one here. This would be for the public without any credentials. And the top one is the one that will ask for credentials if you send that link out to the public. But those credentials will be the same for every member of the public. So depending on how you want to share those files, without password protection or with password protection. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to check out all the other videos in this series. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and share this video with friends, family and total strangers. Bye for now. I will see you next time.